Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today is Saturday. It's Saturday morning, actually, and I decided to get up today to talk a little bit about the Flash Forge 85X and some concerns that I've been seeing online, some things that are coming up in the future, and something brand new that I just found out today. So in going around on the internet, I'm seeing that there is some uh, concern and definitely a little bit of frustration over this printer. And the main reason is because you can't buy it right now. And on top of that, we don't know when the general public will be able to buy it. And Flash Forge has not been very forthcoming with that information. And because of that, when you don't communicate properly, that just leaves the door open for folks to come up with their own theories, with their own realities. And most of the time, those things are not true. But when you don't combat them, they become the, the prevalent way of thinking. So some people think that the 85X is never going to come out, that they realize there's too many problems with this printer and they just decided to quietly scrap it while they come out with a brand new model, basically just leaving the early adapters kind of just in the dust. And that would be extremely frustrating if you were to purchase a printer only to find out some months later that uh, it's not good enough and they're moving forward with a brand new model and then you're sitting here just kind of wondering well I didn't even get a chance to buy another nozzle because they're not for sale I'm not saying that any of that is true I'm just saying that that's the type of thought that tends to bubble up and grow and spread unless someone says actually the official word is it will become available starting blank 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 all right so that's what's currently going on with the 85X as far as the release goes. I don't know any more than anybody else, but like I said in one of my previous videos, I'm not going to do a full review on this printer until it's made available to purchase, not just for pre-order, but available to purchase and it's going to be ready to ship to you. When that happens, then I'll be able to put out my reviews. But until then, it's not going to be a review. All right, so here's just a look. At the uh, web page for the 85X, it's kind of difficult to find if you just go to the Flash Forge website because it, they don't highlight it anymore. But there are still links from other sources that will take you back to this page. And it's been like this forever. Just sold out, sold out, sold out. So don't know what's going on with that. However, even though we don't know when the 85X is coming out, we do know that there is a new product that Flash Forge is working on that they're actually going to reveal very, very soon. And by very, very soon, I mean in just a few days. Rapid TCT 2025 is going down from April the 8th to April the 10th in Detroit, Michigan, here in the United States. And here is a teaser image that Flash Forge has up on their social media. And here are some products that they're going to be highlighting. So we see that we got the 85X with the Tiger on top. We've got the Guider 4 Pro, which is an enclosed larger version. We have the Guider 3 Ultra right here that they're still pushing but then you have this mysterious thing here underneath this cloth and so the question is what is under the cloth see that there's a little spool of filament hanging off the side so okay so it looks like it's going to be a filament printer but what kind of filament printer because we already have the 85x we already know about the guider 4 pro what could this possibly be Speculation from the community has said that maybe this is the 85X Pro, kind of like how the Adventure 5M Pro was the step up from the Adventure 5M. And it's possible, though admittedly in this picture, it does look kind of short. <laughs> it does look kind of short, so I, I, I don't know exactly. But here's the thing. It might be an 85X Pro. I don't think that it would be a great idea to really show this off when the original 85X isn't even available to buy and then you're like hey here's a new model unless the new model is replacing the old model and again that's where I said that that's what uh, lead people to feel really dejected if the printer that they bought was kind of cast off to the side because here's the new one the one that's going to be more competitive but we'll see what happens with that. 
But it was a kind of a weird thing because I personally didn't think that there would be a 85X Pro. I believe that the Guider 4 Pro was essentially going to be the 85X Pro. And it really had to do with price points because in my mind, I was thinking, if you have the 85X for $400 and then you come out with an 85X Pro and let's say the Pro version is $200 more than the original version. So that puts it at $600. But then you have the Guider 4 Pro. Now, they say that that one was going to be very competitively priced. So if you already have an 85X Pro that you're selling for $600, assuming that it's $200 more than the uh, than the base model, then you would have $200 more possibly for the Guider 4 Pro that will put you at $800, right? So then you have this $400, $600, and then $800 SKUs three different printers. Two of them are the exact same size. It just seems to me like that's a bit too much, that you would only have two, ideally, and that would be the regular 85X, and then you can have the bigger and enclosed Guider 4 Pro with nothing else in the middle. I think that's one too many SKUs if they do that, but hey, what do I know? I'm not the business person. But here's the other thing. In addition to this mysterious printer being shown off at Rapid TCT, if it's an enclosed pro version of the 85X, did you know that there is an official enclosure available for the 85X and you can actually start printing the parts for it right now? Here is what the enclosed 85X looks like once you print all the parts and you put everything together. And it definitely makes the printer much taller than it is. And it makes it look like it can print much larger than it's actually capable of. But it's a pretty clean look. And the printed parts are available to download right now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be all that difficult to put together. In fact, it seems like it's going to be even easier to put together than the 5M's enclosure was. I have the files open right here in Orca Slicer, and these are all the pieces that you would have to print. Most of them consist of these guard pieces right here that they bundle together in just one big lump. And then we also have these little top pieces that's going to go on top. And as you can see, they are not nearly as huge and bulky as the original 5M's top piece enclosures were. And uh, thankfully, the community, someone from the community created a minimalized, much smaller version of those top pieces to not use as much filament. And then down here, we just have some of the smaller parts. We got that plate that goes on the front and then we have hinges for the doors and here's the door handle. And it doesn't take too much filament to print any of these. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find the 3MF files and everything that Flash Wars provided for this. But the original profile here, they have this in uh, regular PLA, so not even PETG. These are all designed for PLA. So let's just see like how much filament these are going to take. So this is going to take 14 hours and 15 minutes to print, and it's going to take 434 grams of filament. And it does need supports, but not too many. It's just got a couple of tree supports right here, and it has a, a brim incorporated as well. But the brim only does like a gram and a half of filament, so that's really just nothing. And then the supports, 14 grams of filament. So not much as far as uh, parts and pieces and stuff that you're not actually going to use. But since this one is going to be like 435 grams of filament, then the next one is going to be the exact same. And then we have this plate down here. And this plate here is going to take about 90 grams of filament and about four hours to print. So you give yourself a little over a day. If you're just using one printer to print these, you can have all the printed pieces that you need for this enclosure. And I will say all together to be on the safe side, if everything works out and nothing fails, it's going to take you a little over one roll of filament to print the pieces for this enclosure. And I think that that is pretty darn good. Just a single roll that you can dedicate to this this. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't look too complex at all. Now, if we can take a look at the instructions, this is the installation guide right here, and it's got 19 steps, but they don't seem complicated at all. So you're just going to be screwing in those uh, 
hinges right here onto the frame and then you have the various guard plates so that's the a1 and a2 just screwing those in and then you got the b plates you're putting those in and then you have to take off the the spools from the side so that you can install some more guard plates to them and as far as the screen goes, you do have to disconnect the screen from being mounted on the printer, but you don't have to actually take the ribbon cable out. So you just move it out of the way so that you can install some more guard plates like this one here. And then you can just snap the screen right back on. And then you have the acrylic plates that just slide along the side. There's going to be some magnets just like the original 5M to make sure that those stay nice in place. And then you put the door on, it has the hinges, you got magnets for the doors to keep it shut. And then you have these other guard plates that sit slightly above the top of the printer that you're going to use to slide the acrylic plates in between. And then you're going to take the thinner top assembly to put it on top of those uh, of the guard plates and of the on top of the acrylic panels on top. And then you screw those in and then you just put the top lid on. And that's pretty much it. You got to reinstall the uh, the IFS and then put the spool holders on, of course. And then the PTFE tubes are going to go through this opening that's created on the printer. And then you'll be good to go. Um, and then this is just, you know, reconnected. But the cool thing about this is that it doesn't have you messing with the tool head to take off the cover and put another cover on. There's no drag chain that you have to mess around with. Like I said earlier, you don't have to take the screen off and disconnect the ribbon cable and then do all that. So it seems like the 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 core of it is really easy to put together. And it to me seems like it's going to be much easier process than the enclosure for the adventure 5m there's no filament runout sensor that you have to place in a weird way you don't have to run the filament through a little hole and then you got to get it through the filament sensor and the original design is at a bit of a weird angle so it's a little bit complicated to get it through the sensor again but since the filament um, sensor is inside of the print head you don't have to worry about that so this seems like a much more sensitive design than the original. Now, of course, with these acrylic panels and everything and the magnets and the screws, there's got to be a kit that you can buy, right? But the kit is not available, at least not when I checked. So when we're going to actually be able to do this, I have no idea. And if you've been around since the Adventure 5M days, you'll know that the enclosure kit took a long time to come out. It took months since they announced it that it actually came out. So you can print these pieces right now if you want. But for me personally, I would just wait until you can actually buy the kit and then start printing the pieces. Because as we just saw, you give yourself uh, like 28 hours or something like that. You'll be able to have all the pieces ready. So I would much rather do that instead of just printing them and then waiting God knows how long in order for the actual kit to become available. But if you wanted to get this enclosed, this is the official way. And it looks pretty neat. So that's it. That's all the information that I want to talk about today about the 85X. And uh, I'm going to be keeping my eyes open to see what they announce at Rapid TCT. And hopefully, maybe we'll find out when you can actually buy the printer at that point and whatever the heck they got hiding underneath that sheet. So that's all for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves. And I'll speak to you soon.